Welcome back to That's Life with John Carver. I'm calling this episode The Mockingbird Metaphor. This is episode number 269. Way back in, my goodness, in 2006, we started building a house in the country. And in 2020, in March of 2020, we moved into another home that was uh, and is uh, one over 30 acres. We live in a farmhouse now. And I noticed in the summer of 2021 that there is at least this one mockingbird that sits on top of an electric pole just outside our home office. And he makes a, he or she makes a bunch of racket. I mean, this mockingbird just is nonstop all day, it seems. So I kind of wanted to do some homework to see if there was a connection between some ideas that I had going on in my head that I can share with you. I just want to share with you here today. According to the New York Times, scientists believe that mockingbirds imitate the calls and songs of other birds, it says, to discourage these birds from settling in the mockingbird's territory by making the territory appear to be heavily populated. So the, the article says that the mockingbird's vocal cords, called the, the syrinx, if I said that correctly, can produce a wide variety of sounds. A typical mockingbird is, has 250 to 350 songs. Now, if you stop and think about the idea of a mockingbird, it seems that there are many people in society that act like a mockingbird. They repeat other people's words and do what other people do without understanding why they're doing what they're doing. Let me just share a couple silly examples. In 2001, in a, uh, another edition of uh, a magazine called Reader's Digest, there was a story that says, quote, when my friend Dale opens a can, she always turns it upside down to open it from the bottom. One day, her young son asked why. I asked why she turns it upside down. She said, I really don't know. She said, Mom always did it that way. So she called the mom to ask why she turns the jar, the can upside down to open it. Well, she said, when we brought the cans up from the cellar, the tops were always dusty. Her mother explained, I couldn't be bothered to clean them, so I turned them upside down and opened the bottom. Stop to think about that a minute. Sometimes you do some stuff that's pretty silly because other people have done some things and you don't know the why behind it. When really the why wasn't necessarily even logical. There's another story that I've shared multiple times. Let me share it with you. It says, quote, a husband and his wife were in their kitchen and the husband was sitting at the kitchen table reading the newspaper while the wife was preparing a ham for dinner. The husband watched the wife cut one inch from either end of the ham and he, he said, you know, why did you cut the ends off of the ham. Well, because that, that's, I mean, why are you cutting it? Because that's a really, it's a waste of ham. Why are you throwing her away? She said that, well, that's why, that's what my mom did. My mom always cut either end of the ham off. So she, so the husband asked the wife, well, why did you, why did your mom cut off either end? I, I don't know, she just did. So later the wife called her mom to find out why she cut off the, the, the ends of the ham. Her mom said, quote, because that was the way my mom prepared ham. Wait a minute. They don't even know the why behind it. So the, the wife's grandma passed several years ago, but her grandpa was still alive. So she called her grandpa and asked, Grandpa, why did grandma cut the ends off the ham? So he was silent and thought about it for a minute. Then he replied, oh, so the ham could fit in the baking pan. So their logic for cutting off either end of the ham was because for the grandmom, the ham wouldn't fit in the baking pan that she had. So all this time, for decades, they've been doing something that didn't make sense to them, but because somebody else did it, they did it that way. So it's so important to not be a mockingbird, to copy the habits of people around you without understanding the why behind what they do. Now, there's an exception to this mockingbird mindset, and that is people that have proven to be successful and honest and, and build their lives on serving others. That, that's a good model. That's a good thing to copy, for sure. So that's the exception. But your assumptions about the people 
in your life that you copy may not be, in fact, are probably not based in fact. So do the hard work to find your own voice and not be a mockingbird. My name is John Carver. Thanks for watching. Thank you.